Hello, I'm Laura McCarry at The Hidden Edge with another tea break tip on how to use business models and tools to help you manage your growing business. Today, we're looking at the statutory requirements for employing people. If you're taking on staff for the first time, it's crucial to get to grips with employment law and keep on top of it. Employment law encompasses dozens of different laws and acts in relation to the rights of employees including disability discrimination, senior employee rights, health and safety and contracts, to name but a few. Due to the complexity of this legislation, many businesses choose to employ a solicitor or a human resources advisor to make sure that they have all of the procedures watertight. So let's have a look at some of those statutory rights. Some of the basic things to consider and make sure that you adhere to include the statutory rights of an employee. Over a multitude of directives and responsibilities for the employer. Include written employment contracts. Contracts of employment are important for both the employer and employee. It should set out the employee's duties, responsibilities, rights and employment conditions. It should also have a written statement of employment particulars. Employers should also have liability insurance and have written dismissal, disciplinary and grievance rules. There are also responsibility for their employees' well-being at work. This includes health and safety responsibilities and compliance, discrimination, bullying, maternity, and paternity and adoption leave. You must comply with the Health and Safety Act, which in practical terms means that you must, where applicable, carry out a thorough risk assessment, have a health and safety policy and a paper trail for recording injuries and accidents at work. The national minimum and living wage is set out on an annual basis by the government. Employer, you're required to give each employee a written and itemised pay statement which details gross salary, any deductions made and the employee's net pay. The right to at least 28 days paid holiday, including bank holidays, Unless, of course, they are part time, in which case they are entitled to the same but pro rata. Employees are also entitled to time off for a number of different reasons and in the event of uncertain circumstances or occurrences. Emergency leave and maternity leave should be available in addition to standard holiday entitlements. Employees are also eligible to ask for flexibility in terms of their working hours the right to ask, it doesn't mean that if it isn't appropriate for your business that you have to accede to that. Shared parental leave is now introduced and provides greater flexibility how parents share the care of their child in its first year. It's available to couples with a baby due or children placed for adoption parental order. In addition to that, there is parental leave, and this is the statutory right for a period of unpaid leave that can be taken by a parent during the first 18 years of a child's life. Sufficient qualifying service will have the right to 18 weeks unpaid parental leave up until the 18th birthday. Shortly, grandparent leave will also come into effect. This will be available to any grandparent looking after children, so long as they are still of working age. Employees are entitled to statutory sick pay commencing the fourth consecutive day that they do not attend work due to illness. The Fit for Work service. This offers employers access to free occupational assistance to being off sick for four weeks or more. The service can also be used to provide more generalised open access occupational health advice to employees, employers and general practitioners. Adoption leave 
regulations in 2014 made significant changes to the adoption leave. The 26 week qualifying period to be adoption leave is now removed and it brings it in line with the requirements for maternity leave. Exclusivity clauses in zero hour contracts were prohibited in 2015. New regulations in January 2016 aimed at addressing avoidance of the ban and give employees the power to make a complaint to an employment tribunal where they have been dismissed or subjected to detriment following a breach of an exclusivity clause. Pressuring foreign workers with a tier two visa will be required to pay an immigration skills charge of £1,000 per worker. £164 for small employers and charities though. There is a lot to consider, but there are two major things coming in this year that we get our head round. First of all, the general data protection regulations, which come into effect in May 2018. Employers will need to carry out audits of employee personal data that they collect and process to ensure that it meets the conditions for employee consent. And record keeping requirements mean that employers will also have to create or amend policies and processes on privacy notices, data breach responses and sub subject access requests. I have created a separate video for this, which I recommend that you have a look at. And then there is auto enrolment. There are six things that you need to do. Firstly, who to contact. If you haven't done so already, you should now confirm who the employer, owner or most senior person in the company is, as they are responsible for making sure that the legal duties are met. You need to choose a pension scheme or check your existing one. This is around six months before your staging date. Pension scheme that is set up for auto enrolment for payment and help them save for their retirement. If you have an existing scheme, you should check with your provider to see if it can be used for auto enrolment. Or you don't have an existing pension scheme, you will need to find one. The government has set up the National Employment Savings Trust for employees that wish to use it for automatic enrolment. Step three, work out who to put into the pension scheme. You must do this on your staging date. At that time, you must work out how much each member of staff earns and how old they are. Step four, write to your staff within six weeks after your staging date. It is your legal duty to write to all your staff individually to explain how automatic enrolment applies to them. Declare your compliance. You must do this within five months after your staging date. You can start your, start your declaration of compliance at any time. Beat it by your declaration deadline. Then there are ongoing duties which you do need to monitor. They include paying money into the pension schemes, dealing with requests to join and to leave the pension scheme, the ages and the earnings of your staff, and keeping accurate records of what you have done. Yes, you'll need to put staff back into your pension scheme if they have left, and if they meet the criteria to be put into a pension scheme. This is known as automatic re-enrolment. Expanding a business and employing new staff is an exciting prospect. However, it is important to make sure that you and your company adhere to all the necessary laws and regulations. It's quite difficult to keep on top of it, it all. I use Expert HR where they list the um, list all the, the up and coming laws. Also, ACAS website is a really great resource. Do download the checklist from the Hidden Edge website. Share your stories there too, good, bad or indifferent. I'm building a portfolio of case studies that will support other small businesses and it would great, be great to have your stories. So that's it from me. Until next tea break time, enjoy the rest of this one.